Good evening and welcome to the Gaming Kin podcast. Once again, as always, I am Jack and I'm here once again with Mark. Hey. So we have a we have two really big things to talk about tonight and we've got two things that aren't so big. Big news for the people involved, these other two things. However, in the grand scheme of things, these other two things were, were kind of more important. Uh, I think it's the way to put it. One way of putting it, yes. So why don't we start with the big story of the of the moment, and that is the continuing story of loot boxes. Mm. Yes, loot boxes. Well, um, just before Christmas, just after Star Wars Battlefront Two released, Hawaiian representative uh, Chris Chris Lee Woo! Uh, went out. Blast EDA for their loot box mechanics within Star Wars Battlefront 2, especially during the beta because it was pay to win and called it a Star Wars themed casino. Shortly after that, EA went, right, okay, we're taking the microtransactions out of the game. For now. But they have also said they're bringing them back. So, what then happened was the ESA lobbyist went to Hawaii and he had no idea what the hell he was saying. Absolutely fuck all. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what the ESA is, it is the Entertainment Software Association. They are the trade association for video games in the United States. They cover pretty much all the big publishers and develop developers in the video games world or their American subsidies. Uh, the only notable, notable exception to who they cover is CD Projekt Red. Uh, these are also the guys that run the E3 uh, co- uh, expo every year mm-hmm. and they also oversee the the ratings board the ESRB in in America and the you know ESRB covers Canada yeah. and other parts of uh, the American continent not just the, the country over here we, we have uh, PEGI mm-hmm. the pan-european uh, I can't remember something, gaming something, something uh, uh, I looked it up the other night and I would have remembered it if I had put it in my notes. Uh, but so the guy uh, was an ESA lobbyist. I think it was two, but it could have been a guy who lived in Hawaii. I think it was just some random dude from the stage, to be honest. Um, but the other guy looked like he was on vacation and he seemed knowledgeable. The guy who was definitely an ESA representative <laughs> was not. had no idea what the hell he's doing. So, um, you know, questions were posed by Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. Chris Lee. Um, Both good um, Lees. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of the questions and answers because it would probably just take too long to, to read them all out. And also, a lot of people have already seen the video or seen YouTube videos about people covering it because this, this was like the day after our last podcast went live. So this has been out a couple of weeks anyway. Mm-hmm. So, the first question, is it worrying the harm these me- the, these mechanisms, the loot box mechanics, can cause, particularly to younger people and kids? The guy from the, e- the ESA tries to cite the ESRB classifications, saying, you know, talking about how it's rated E for everyone or T for teen, that doesn't answer the question. It doesn't really help much either. Just no. Having um, a specification from the game mechanic does not wear in, give an age rating. Yeah. Um, he then poses the question: Does the ESRB rate loot boxes? To which the guy says, "No idea." Actually, the particular phrase was, "I can't answer that question," which was the phrase he used the most in the whole interview. Surely, if he's a representative, it should be a straight-up question: Do you or don't they? If you work for him, you must have an idea of what your company does and does not do. Well, he doesn't work for the ESRB, he works for the ESA, so however the ESA do oversee the ESRB, so he should still have some knowledge of it. But it's not even that, like, the ESA are sending him there, surely he should at least be tooled up enough to know, even if it's not his particular department. Or it's like, the guy can get with him fast enough, so he's the last one to get back, so it's like, you're going. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the other gentleman says no. The ESR, ES, ESRB says it's not gambling, so they don't 
feel the need to rate it. Of course it's gambling, you don't know what's going to happen, you put your money in and hope you win. Well, that was one of the things that Christopher Lee brought Chris, I keep saying Christopher Lee. Chris Lee brought up. Um, a, the UK Gambling Commission did a study and found, I can't remember the exact percentage, I only just watched the video about 10 minutes ago to show Mark, I think it was about 70% of 11 to 16 year olds know of something called skins betting which ah, yes. is uh, prevalent in games like CSGO and PUBG mm -hmm. where you can buy loot boxes, get items out of them and you can sell them sell them on uh, so you can essentially cash out on what you've got out of the loot box Fucking insane and uh, the guy says I, I didn't know about that um, when he was asked, do you think that's betting? He says, I don't know. Well, it is. It is betting. So, another question was, how do players know the odds of what they're going to get? Mm -hmm. And, again, ESA representative comes back with, buying loot boxes are optional. To which, Chris Lee comes away with the greatest burn ever. It's the same with a casino. Boom! Um which our helpful gentleman in the koi fish shirt in the very video. Very snazzy, very snazzy. He looks like he was on vacation and he looked like he was loving it. He says there's not, there's no way of telling. However, Chris Lee pointed out that China by law requires that it odds for loot boxes be published. Mm -hmm. um, however, also it wasn't mentioned in the video but for talking sake, uh, Apple are also working on implementing this within their app store worldwide which is something that they've been working on since roughly about the whole loot box controversy with Battlefront 2 started. Mm -hmm. So we should be seeing that coming into the App Store soon. Um, the next question is, is there a minimum age, rain, age rating on a game with loot boxes? Now, our ever so helpful gentleman <laughs> from the ESA tries to repeat his answer from the first question which helps us in no way not even a lot of because I mean sure like the ESRB rate games on content story and design is their nudity is their violence sure but awesome things all of them but loot boxes are gambling if I mean, if it was the UK government that rated it using UK laws, mm -hmm. they would have rated it an 18 because it's gambling. Straight up. However, Peggy don't rate loot boxes either. Um, however, Peggy have not really said a word on loot boxes, unlike the ESRB, so. Um, I don't well, know. It's a complicated matter. As annoying as it is to say, no other gentleman does have a point in that it is an optional element. Yeah. You're not required to complete the game. Uh, in order to complete the game, you're not required to uh, buy loot boxes. However, obviously it does upset some, a lot of people, you know, sane people, who have a great skill in the game, to then get destroyed by a noob because he's using daddy's wallet. Mm. Well, here's the thing though, you, you say you don't need to buy loot boxes to complete the game. Like, I, I never played um, the, the new Lord of the Rings game, the Shadow of War. Yeah, I think I that's the one, yes. Uh, now, you can complete the story without loot boxes. Uh, oh, that has loot boxes? It has loot boxes. It's a single player game with loot boxes. Oh, fuck off. However, the grind to get to the end game is so intensive, they, they encourage you to buy loot boxes to get there within a reasonable time frame. It's a game. Oh no, I'm, it, it can take weeks upon weeks of grinding just to get to the end game. Seriously? Like, like you're about to hit end game and then there's weeks of grinding on top of that. Um, Clearly you're just being a fuck up there. No, there's not. They're just trying to get more money out of their game. That's upsetting. If I spend 50 quid in a game, I at least expect the content I'm being given to be amazing. In case of, say, uh, Witcher 3, additional content I'll quite happily, play for, um, I'll quite happily pay for if it 
it gives me the same content, the same idea of content, the same degree of the original game basically. Yeah. If I'm getting more of the same then obviously I'm going to pay more but I'm not going to pay just to be able to play the game to a satisfactory level. That's insane. Yeah. Um, but uh, our, 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 our good friend in the Koi shirt, he then turns around and says the issue is the ESRB ignoring loot boxes and not taking action and you know the whole controversy around Star Wars Battlefront 2 you know it's it was a uh, it was great seeing him sticking up for gamers and trying to not you know trying to stop the ESA from dodging the question even though he didn't he eventually didn't even bother answering the question he just moved on to the next question but it was good to see him try to kind of stick up for gamers um, Chris Lee then went on to ask can parents find out if a game has loot boxes where can a parent go to find out and the ESA representative says to the ESRB site and then and then Chris Lee you know I can't remember the exact question uh, but it revolved around does the ESRB contain information about loot boxes in the games and he says he's not aware if it does way to go man awesome I, I really really think this guy might be an idiot um, and, uh, so the follow up question was asked uh, if a, a store like GameStop um, I don't know why people keep referencing GameStop everybody hates GameStop uh, we don't have we don't have it here in, in, in the UK. We've got Game. We used to have Game Station. Yeah, those are the days. But most of us just generally buy them off Amazon or down at CEX these days. Amazon or PlayStation Store for me. I still go to CEX. I like CEX. You like browsing, you weirdo. I love I love going to CEX. Like not just for the video games, like consoles, phones, like accessories. Like see anything in that store. I could go in there for like three hours and just browse and be in like geek heaven. A little part of me I really hope you say it's like a hot girl who work there, but you know, you go for your consoles. There, there, there are a couple of. Uh -huh, ah, yeah, you backtrack, there. you backtrack. <laughs> That's not why I go there. You know, I, I go there for the geek stuff, but um. You go there for all the content to know the quality. <laughs> um, but <laughs> anyway, back to the, back to. Um, subject at hand. <laughs> broke, utterly oh, <really> broken. <laughs> You're never coming back. <laughs> um, so that does. Uh, when you go to a game store, does it say anywhere on the box if a game has old boxes on it? And the answer was, don't know. Well, on the note of does it say on the box, the ESRB recently chimed in. They released a statement. It reads, and I quote. Right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, stop midway through the quote at points and give my opinion on it mm -hmm. while I remember what point I'm at for <laughs> that said opinion, and then we'll go over it, go over parts of it once I'm done. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You may have noticed we've been a little quiet on the topic of in-game purchases and loot boxes. No shit. But we've been listening. I call bullshit. So it's kind of creepy. <laughs> Quiet, but I'm listening to you. <laughs> In fact, we've absorbed every tweet, email, Facebook post, and singing telegram sent our way. Yes, they even said singing telegram. Someone needs to send them singing telegram saying, No, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh. No, no, no. What we need to do is send them a barbershop quartet just singing uh, repeatedly for about four hours. I call bullshit. After four hours, even the guys saying are going to kill themselves. Yes, um, and we've been work and we've been working to develop a sensible approach to let gamers and parents know when a game offers the option to purchase additional content. That sounds like it could be promising. Well, I mean, even in like uh, mobile games nowadays, it does have a little section that it can say yeah. contains an app purchasing. It, yeah. It's not like hard to just have it on the actual case. Look down the bottom, violence, nudity, contains an app purchasing. Yeah. Starting soon, ESRB will be assigning a brand new label to physical games. 
in-game purchases. This label, or as we call it, interactive element, will, will appear on boxes and... Turn page. Flipping, flipping. <laughs> and wherever the game can be downloaded. For all games that offer the ability to purchase digital goods or premiums with real world currency. This includes features like bonus levels, skins, surprise items such as item packs, loot boxes and mystery awards, music, virtual coins and other forms of in-game currency, subscriptions, season passes, upgrades like um, mobile apps to disable ads and more. We're also launching a new website, parentaltools.org, which when I read it, when I read, when I read the, when I read the, the statement and uh, was writing down, because I've done all my notes in handwritten form, and, because I was using YouTube videos for some of it and I couldn't be bothered like pausing to type certain things, uh, I ended up with like Silver Surfer Syndrome, only it was blue. Um, but I actually originally wrote parent tools, and I was going to make a point of like you know that that's that's quite blatantly up, but no, it's, it's parental tools, not parent tools, like I originally thought. Um, launching a new website, parental tools to help raise awareness uh, of helpful tools that prov uh, that parents can use to manage the amount of time and money those crafty kids spend playing games. It's like they're trying to say it's the kid's fault now. To be fair, PlayStation has, um, has actually released a patch, I think it was in the past couple of days, and it allows you to put on a limit to how long you can play anyway and what games you can yeah. access. Uh, well, what games you can access has always been there, because yeah, you can set it by age rating. But now there's a thing, that apparently uh, you can set it to turn off the actual console mm -hmm. within, within a certain amount of time. So even then, like effectively, PlayStation's already way ahead of all these people. Yeah. <coughs> this is the first step of many, probably not. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to discuss how to further enhance our rating system with publishers, dev, uh, developers, gamers and especially parents. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to make adjustments as the need arises. Thank you for your patience on this and for your love of the games we rate ESRB. Now, like I said, it, like near the end it does kind of make it sound like it's the parents and the kids fault for for you know all the loot box outrage, but I mean, it's EA's fault in the first place. Well, not even EA, like every loot box game developer's fault, mostly EA because they've just taken a piss with it lately. But you know, all of them. Um, you know, my biggest issue with it is the interactive element doesn't affect the rating at all. Mm -hmm. So you could realistically have loot boxes and similar things in games as low as EC, which is Early Childhood. <laughs> Jesus. Or E for Everyone, which is generally kids games like Pokemon and Mario. Well, bless you, I've got most of the loot boxes as, like, you got all these parents kicking off about it, but at the same time, in order for kids to buy these things, they need to, one, have card details installed. Yeah. So as soon as you do that as a parent, you should be aware that unless you put in restrictions, all it does take is a couple of clicks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can have kid like you, a little sweet angel, but as soon as you realise, wait, I can click this and this and this and get whatever I want, well, I'm not going to ask mum and dad when I do it. Yeah. That's in the parent that it's not in the kid or the company. But at the same time, we as um, consumers, we do like to have little extras now and again. Yeah. So, also one last point, the idea of having a little a little note on the boxes that interact with elements, that will not help. Because as you pointed out, there's a list of things that come under that. Yeah. So if all we do is, like, say it's like DLC for, say, Witcher. Well, that was going to be my next point. Oh, I'll just jump in and bump it. Point is, like, down here, every game in the days will have some form of interactive thing, so it doesn't yeah. help. Yeah. For instance, uh, Overwatch. Oh, oh God, the loot boxes. Yeah. I'm, I, well... I think I mentioned this in the last podcast mm. or in the podcast before that when I done it with Josh. Um, games like Overwatch with the loot boxes, I'm kind of better with them having loot boxes because it is all cosmetic. I mean, sure, you've got, you know, if someone wants a particular skin, they're going to buy loot boxes repeatedly till they get it, mm -hmm. which is an issue, and I don't like that. Uh, that how it's it's made to be addictive. You don't know what you're going to get and stuff. 
but the fact is it is all cosmetic unlike the original plans for Battlefront 2 where it was actually going to affect in-game progress yeah you know when it becomes pay to win like I I've played Battlefront 2 once and that was because my friend owned it and I was up his for a drink and he went do you want a quick game so, uh, while we wait for this other game we wanted to play to download I was like sure why not let's play a couple of rounds and that was it but I'm not going to buy it I'm not going to sit and play it for you know sit and have big gaming sessions we played it for about half an hour and we got bored um, but no I, I don't see the point in buying it especially because the EA CEO like, like we did mention is talking about bringing pay to win loot box mechanics back to Battlefront 2 and as I said before, I don't see how that helps an average Joe gamer. Someone who just loves games for their story elements, who just loves to get lost in the journey, effectively. You can't do that if you have to spend 50 quid in order to get a good character that's actually strong enough to carry the game forward. Well, that's the thing, though. EA doesn't care about people who like a story anymore. They want to run everything as games as service. It's if you're wanting <sighs> games with story, you're wanting now to go to Bethesda, Square Enix, or CD Projekt Red. Mm -hmm. Those are probably your main ones. Uh, some of the games you might find from Nintendo with the likes of um, Legend of Zelda. Mm. Ah, man, the gaming's getting darker and darker every year. But yeah, like you pretty much covered most of my, my point for like my second issue with this new way. You know, it, it just covers everything. Um, like. I mean, you mentioned DLCs, but if you take it, like price point into account as well. Mm -hmm. um, I bought Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. I pre-ordered it. It was about thirty pound. About. And on release, like when it was four point oh, because it's a, it's an online game. You know, it's an MMO, so it does get patched regularly. Yeah. Um, the next patch is on Tuesday, and it's going to be four point two five. Um, that's that's what the version number will be. But at 4.0, it was a minimum of 30 hours of gameplay. That I mean, that's including new dungeons, new classes, new story, uh, side quests. You know, I'm not talking about just A to B in the yeah. main story. I'm talking about other content as well. Sounds awesome. Um, whereas loot boxes are way cheaper. You know, they're generally at most two pound fifty, I think. Right. But they're, they're not as much content. It's like a second of content as it shows you what you've got out of the loot box. Yeah. I feel that while not all of them hit what they're meant to, expansion packs and DLCs like Mass Effect Citadel and The Witcher ones. Oh, that or, amazing Witcher goodness. Or, you know, all the expansions for Final Fantasy fourteen or World of Warcraft. They're made to enhance the game experience yeah. for players. Keep the high going. Loot boxes, they're, they, they, they give some players a high, especially if they get the thing they want. Yeah, they get their favourite colour of armour. Yeah. Oh, looking blue. Woo! But, I mean, they're mostly there. They're not there to enhance the game experience for players. They're there to pad the wallets of the shareholders and the CEOs and, you know, like, what most of the developers will probably get bugger all from loot boxes. Yeah. It'll all go to the higher ups. Well, the only time I've seen loot boxes and not been like, generally annoyed at them is when they're bought off in game currency. So, like, you basically, you just play the game, you have fun, yeah. and then you gain currency just from doing the cool well, things. You That's, can do that in Star Wars Battlefront too. I'm just assuming it takes a lot longer. Way longer. But it's less you. Well, they figured out, like, you needed, like, so many points. To get a loot box, enough loot boxes, or or a certain type of loot box, I can't remember. To There's get types of loot boxes. Well, come on. To get Vader, and Beta, and they figured it would have taken you about two weeks of grinding, if my memory serves. I mean, this was back in November, and this isn't part. Of, this wasn't scripted. This part of the conversation, so. I didn't exactly think to take notes of it down so I could remember exactly, but I think it was about two weeks of grinding. Um, Fucking hell. Just to get a character. Who yeah. should have been in the base game anyway. 
just to clarify, when you say just to get them, is that like two weeks of getting random loot boxes hoping to get them, or do you mean earning enough points in order to buy a loot box specifically to get them? Well, I don't know how it worked, I didn't play the beta, okay. but um, as far as I was aware, like, I mean, you could buy them not in a loot box, but you could buy them with in-game oh, currency. Oh, right, I got you, I got you. But you don't get in-game currency in the loot boxes. So, so if you bought loot, loot boxes, it would take even longer. Yeah, but if you earn enough currency, in-game currency, just buy them. That's a different issue altogether, though. Mm, that's more true. like time over income. If you've got the time you want to grind, then by all means, if you love the game enough, go for it. But if it's literally, you need to spend like 30 quid to get this one character, I mean, damn, what the hell? Uh, yeah, uh, loot boxes are to pad out. Uh, the, stock the stockholder's pockets are the expense of the game, and that's the way I see it. Um, although, I, I came up with a simple solution, I told you this earlier. Mm -hmm. Right, um, if a game has a loot box in it, it is gambling. Using UK law, it would be a Peggy 18 game, because you can't gamble until you're 18. And using the ESRB, it would have an AO rating, which is 18 and over, because you've got E for everyone, uh, T for teen, which is 13 up, mm. M for mature, which is 17 and up, and adults only. The issue with that, though, is... Uh, Sony and PlayStation, uh, Sony PlayStation, and Microsoft Xbox won't play AO games on their consoles. They won't allow games to be made for their devices that have an AO rating. Mm -hmm. And the only uh, online store that really touches it is Steam. Yeah. Uh, most game stores won't touch it. So it would cut down the amount of games that have loot boxes in them. To be fair. Uh, but it would also cut down the amount of games that we're going to get because most games seem to be going towards this loot box trend which uh, kind of sucks. Well, there's other things to consider as well. See the other change and um, somehow all these game companies did decide to change all the rules and allow um, 18 over games and such. I wouldn't necessarily even stop anything. No, the amount of parents who Oh yeah, they look at gate ratings, but then they don't think of anything of it. The kid goes on and plays it, and then all of a sudden they're shocked. There's always talk of like kids going on and play like um, Grand Theft Auto, and then they're surprised when their kids playing games again, people shot in the head. Or for instance, this is the beginning, but still one of the funny stories. I seen a Facebook post about a woman who taking her kids to see Deadpool, thinking, "Oh, it's another superhero film. It'll be fine," and they'd leave ten minutes in. Because they're surprised at the swearing and the gore. You should, well, I mean, not some, like, you should always research um, games for kids before you get them, and you should always do the same with movies. If you're, if it's a superhero movie, like Deadpool, mm -hmm. read a couple of Deadpool comics first, for crying out loud. Article of Deadpool, even just in images, you'll find like half of them are inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the tagline, the merc with the, the merc with a mouth, <laughs> Kind of gives it away that he's going to be fucking crude. Little bit, little bit, little bit. But, although, to be fair, I am really, really looking forward to Deadpool 2. Off since, the, off since, topic, it got, oh yeah. since it got mentioned, since Deadpool got mentioned. Thank you. Uh, I, I was hoping to stay on topic, but I, I seen a bit of the trailer and I thought, oh, I can't wait to go see it. Mm. Um, I seen the trailer for Infinity War last night. Alright. I'm so excited for that. Oh hell yeah. May 1st, bring it on. No, no, I didn't get pulled forward to April, I thought. April 27th. Oh yeah. Um, and Ant-Man and the Wasp has a trailer as well. Awesome. And it looks so good. I cannot wait. Okay, see so after last week you could go over movies. A little bit of a padding going, you know what I want to. <laughs> right, uh, well, why don't we just finish off the boxes. So. I don't have. I've, I've literally got one thing left on it anyway. I love it. So ESRB president Patricia Vance uh, also made a statement saying, "We continue to believe loot boxes are a fun way of acquiring virtual items. Most of them are cosmetic, but they are always earned and they will always be optional." You can tell this woman's a non-gamer. Yeah. 
Good lord. I guess someone who does play games that we can be like, no, this is false. We will not get steal your bullshit. If anyone from the ESRB is listening, I will happily like be your president. Um, but I, 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 I'll only take half the pay that uh, this Miss Vance is getting. Lies. I don't, lies. I, lies. I don't need that much money. He does. He does. I, I don't need that much money, but I don't <laughs> want that much money. He does. He does. I really don't. Um, more money, more problems, man. More money, more problems. That's what poor people say. <laughs> I'm poor geese of money. Oh, I'm poor. Uh, but no, um, they need to find a way to get more gamers having a say in how the ESRB does things, I think. And yeah, right. So, you want to do some padding? Is that what you want to do? Two seconds. Just now, to previous topic. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if we made like, a governing board for them, right? It's like an advisory board, but it's made up of like, top gamers. That makes so much more sense. That would be so amazing. Um, I don't think it should be just top gamers. Well, people mean, of the right generation, at the very least. Everyone, everyone would be a gamer, but it, like, I mean, you, 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 uh, you would need to have, <laughs> you would need to have some casual gamers in there as well. Um, but they have to be important people, though. You can't just have random like, yeah, this drove from down the street. He just bought Fortnite. Actually, that's what the ESRB do when they read games. What? Well, what they'll do is, in the long form rating system, mm -hmm. um, so a, a developer will have to send in a game, a description, a video, um, like it all needs to be like a, a kind of small build of the game that they send in, Okay. Um, with basically the majority of the kind of style of content, mm -hmm. so if it's going to be a super violent game, go to work. They're going to have to send in a super violent piece of uh, game mm -hmm. uh, for some. It's generally it's a board made up of I think it was seven people at that time. Mm -hmm. A parent, three hardcore gamers, Ooh. three casual gamers. Okay. And they'll play the game. They'll they'll take notes um, and go right. We think this game should be, you know, anywhere between EC and AO. Right. And then they'll get someone from the ESRB to, to collate all the findings and then, you know, do all the same things that the gamers and parents did themselves. Yeah. And just to make sure that none of them have gone, right, I want this to be an AO game and it turns out to be something completely harmless like Dora the Explorer. And the only reason they're saying AO is because they're sick of their daughter buying Dora the Explorer games all the time. Or you get lost kids. I sound like I've got something against Dora the Explorer right there. A little bit. I have nothing against it. It's he lies. It's just the first thing that came to mind. No, uh, he lies. He's kids. He's monkeys too. My little brother and sister watched uh, Dora the Explorer, and it was fine. Right, I could live with that. No, he went and punched the wall afterwards. No, no. <laughs> See, when they were older, and it was Go Diego Go. Oh come on. Which is Dora's cousin, and it's just a slightly more grown up version of the show for like older ki kids that one done my not in oh my anger my anger is real <laughs> often went from gaming representative council to Diego <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. my love of Nicktoons uh. <laughs> oh man right uh, but I, I think maybe we should really get back to games. Before he really does punch a wall. <laughs> no, before we, we start running out of time. <laughs> running out of time. <laughs> uh, okay, before we start making this podcast overly long. No, that, that people won't listen. listen. Uh, funny. Right, so two bits of uh, mini news. Okay. This is currently Saturday. Just in case someone's watching. Watching? I actually thought it was Sunday. I slipped in, man. <laughs> uh, we're currently on Saturday the 10th of March, just in case you're listening uh, as part of the back catalogue of iTunes or Podbean or whatever platform you're listening on, and you're trying to catch up. Hi, we're in the past. Well, um, on Monday, so two days' time, on the 12th, Fortnite is going cross-platform. Fortnite is going to be released on iOS. 
Xbox is the only console being left out cross platform. Because nobody likes Xbox. I, I'm not quite sure why, but some people say it's because of um, because Epic Games have kind of sided with Sony. Um, Smart choice. Uh, Blue Hole, who make sorry what? Blue Hole. Blue, Blue Hole games. <laughs> I thought you said Blue Hole. <laughs> Blue Hole, who do uh, PUBG. Have ah. sided with Microsoft, um, ah, right, because right. of all the kind of there was a couple of issues regarding the battle royale genre, mm -hmm. and the guys, I, I don't know if it was developers or the publishers, but it was either Tencent or Blue Hole were saying, "Oh, we're going to sue, we're not going to sue, we might sue, we're we're definitely not going to sue, but it's something we're talking about." They're just beating around the bush, saying we're thinking about suing them. Um, Epic Games over the, the Battle Royale. They're, they're claiming that they created the Battle Royale um, genre. That's However, ridiculous. They didn't, but they popularised it, so I kind of see their point they think they've made no. it. No! It wasn't a very popular game that created the genre, to be fair. Um, so they did make it a lot That's bigger. That's weak-ass logic. Anyway, point is, main point being, um, it's going cross platform, but because of uh, the whole, well, what I believe, uh, the reason I believe not Xbox uh, being Xbox not being included is this whole PUBG, Fortnite kind of lore heads. Yeah, so um, there will be some great things because of that, and some issues with that for gamers. Great things is it means you can play Fortnite on the go, mm -hmm. or uh, at work on your lunch break or something like that issues is because of the amount of connect like play, ways it needs to go through the connections from different types of servers and all that it is probably going to get quite laggy at times oh, especially yeah. if there's a lot of mobile players on I'm still not sure how the fuck that's going to work um, but uh, Fortnite for iOS launches Monday and Android will launch in the near future. Uh, it's still been optimised for Android because there's so many different devices and they use such a wide range of different hardware. They, they are working on optimising it to work on all as many devices as possible. Mm -hmm. But it is it does require a lot more work than doing it for the Apple devices. So uh, it has taken a bit more time. It is not just a crappy port or compression of the game, it is being built from the ground up to be the same game, just built on that device's um, software infrastructure. So it, w it should run smoothly, can't guarantee it will, but it should. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like it's going to just be absolutely mental. I'm still trying to figure out if this is even necessary. Is this going to be like a game fad thing where like in a couple of months it's going to be dead in the water? To go to like, well, we don't to go to like much trouble to cross port a game is seems insane. It's still in early access so no one's actually bought, well, no no one's bought the Battle Royale mode. Mm. People have bought the uh, PvE, Save the World, the, the single player, well, multiplayer campaign. Yeah. Um, that, that you have to pay for. Um, however, if you buy like, like I think you get it for like a fifteen pound, or you can buy it for like twenty, and it gives you a code to give to a friend. I don't know because I got mine for free from a code my sister sent me. Huh. Right. Um, and I got that special uh, pa uh, paraglider for the start of the level when you play. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it. Hopefully more games will be cross-platform, um, but hopefully not every game. Some games I do like the the fact that it's just that kind of yeah, wee group, yeah. locked in wee group. Some of them, like I play Final Fantasy XIV, I think it's amazing being able to play alongside PC players. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is like I I play using my controller. Yeah. But see if I did prefer the kind of World of Warcraft using the mouse and keyboard. That's gonna be a really weird thing to try and do. Well, you can do it on PlayStation. Oh, well, we know that. Was um, it. You can set the con control scheme either way, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, the 
PS4 players do look a wee bit laggy to PC players, but I mean that's just this. PCs are right. always going to be better than uh, consoles uh, for that kind of thing. Although, for general, being able to just run a game straight out of the box, the console will always win. Good save, good save. I'm a console player, not a PC player, but I see so many advantages to playing on PC over uh, console. Around it, around it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could like mod a game, I could have specs so high that I could run every game forevermore, theoretically. Mm -hmm. so how much is that going to cost? Probably infinite dollars. Uh, exactly, whereas for a PS4 all you need is a... Yep, yep, yep. A couple okay. hundred quid. A, a PS4. All you need is a PS4. <laughs> yeah. The game. Well, uh, just give it another year. So yeah, I'll play my laggy game. Oh give no. Give it another year, we'll be on PS5 and your PS4 will be up obsolete. My and you'll PS4 still, will be obsolete. You'll still be hoping to afford your super duper PC. Whereas I'll have a PS5 be down a couple hundred dollars. Dollars, damn it, um, quid. But I'll still be sitting playing my games. <laughs> Whilst you'll be looking at your old PC, going, "Why aren't you better?" No, I'm. I'm always going to buy consoles over gaming PCs. To be fair, um, I I do prefer playing on the console. Uh, I all I'm saying is I see advantages to both sides. Uh, so, have you ever used a dating service, Mark? A dating service I have, yes. Yes. The, um, have you ever considered using Metal Gear Survive as a dating service? I don't believe I have. No? Good. Because see if you actually end up ever meeting someone on Metal Gear Survive and start dating them. Mm -hmm. You can get sued. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How great does that work? <laughs> in, the, in the EULA, or the TOS, it says... In an astrocy terms of service, but okay. End, well, it's, it's actually technically the EULA, the End User License Agreement. Thumbs up there, mate. Um, yes, that did look as geeky as it sounds. It was even squint and everything. <laughs> um, part of the terms of service for playing Metal Gear Survive is you cannot date anyone you meet on Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> like... I've known about this news for about a week and a half now, and I've told as many people as I can think of. And he's still giggling his ass And I still laugh still every world. time I think of it. Because, I mean, like, see if you ever meet someone worth dating on Metal Gear Survive. Now, I'm not saying the people who play Metal Gear Survive are, aren't worth dating. I'm saying there's not enough people playing Metal Gear Survive to find someone to date. That's what I'm saying, right? The game was a flop. Tony, it was probably two developers that got too frisky. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, ain't happening, no. Nah. But no, um, I, I, I figured, like, the tip to anyone who does play Metal Gear Survive and does find love on Metal Gear Survive, tell them you were in a relationship before Metal Gear Survive came out and you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> or pick a different game. Or pick a different game. Um. No, I, I I found that so funny when I first read it. I actually fell out my chair laughing. Legitimately. Like, a lot of people say they were laughing on the ground, uh, rolling on the ground laughing. I legitimately was. You've got a low threshold for humour, my friend. It's just... <laughs> no other game I can think of has that in the user agreement. No, I'm, I'm not saying that as in I read the user agreement of every game and know everyone inside out. Shut I don't. Down. I don't. If I get a EULA or a TOS, I just hit OK. Right? So Same as everyone. Same God as no. just about everyone. But someone someone decided to read through it and found this. They're bored and stoned, you can tell. <laughs> and that embarrassed it does like, yeah, you know, go on then. But no, that that really, really made my week. You, so you said it worse and worse, man. It made your week now. It made my week. You felt like the chair laughing and it made your week. Well, so I'll rephrase that. It made my week up until now. Well, right, thank you. Thank you very much. Spending time with you is always worth it, Mark. I would say, man, you need a dating service yourself. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't need a dating service. What? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Continue. Continuing on! <laughs>
Were you expecting me to go, I don't need a dating service, I am a dating service? Was that what you were kind of expecting from me there? No, we're going to come back with Wetty Retour saying, I can meet girls whenever I want. I can, I just I don't feel like it. <laughs> the joys of getting older. I was at work, I work with my ex, and she was making fun of the fact I have grey hair in my beard. See, so that's when you head back, well, you've got grey hair down there. And just watch a look of horror spread. I don't have the balls to say that. Oh, please do. You'll, you'll forevermore thank me because she'll shut up and not say another thing to you. I work in a fast food joint with sharp knives and scissors. I'm not saying that. I don't want to get slashed or stabbed. Ah, oh, man. See, if I was in somewhere safe where there was no physical threat to my health from saying something like that, I would probably come away with it. That's when you say to her, she's leaving. No, because I'll probably have to work around the next day and she'll remember and then stab me. <sighs> Weak. Anyway, anyway, big, 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 big. No, it's not big news at all. It happens every month. <laughs> Nintendo Direct was the first thing. <laughs> Woo! The Nintendo Direct is one of the best moments in a gamer's month, especially if you're a Nintendo fan. And if you're not, it's still pretty cool. Because you find out the release dates for all the new games, you get teasers for some of the new games, you find out what's coming up, usually for a Switch and the 3DS, because that's pretty much all they do now. Um, oh yeah. You see some guys with crazily cool hair. Yes. And their hair was massive, man. It was amazing, wasn't it? So, yes, it was on Thursday and it was Chocolate with some awesome. Uh, did you did not just say Chocolate with some awesome? I did. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cover some of my highlights. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into story or anything like that. Yeah, watch it for yourself, it's fun. What, we recommend you watch it. Um, Skip some bits though. The reason I'm not going to go too deep into it is because if I was going to go deep enough to go into story and stuff, I would then start looking at uh, games before it and other games in the series, and then we, we would be here till next week with me going through just like six games. You're essentially a game historian, aren't you? That should be no. a thing. That should, you... I, I'm not a game historian. You so you just explained it as a game historian would. I, I like to know as much about games as I can. And game librarian. Game. Game, games is kind of like my escape from everyday life, it's how I deal with my mental health issues. So knowing as much about it as possible is, is really like, it's one of the things that gives me solace in life. It's it's my thing, okay? Um, but no, I'm I'm not smart enough to be a game historian or a he game librarian. He is. I'm dedicated enough to try though. <laughs> Good man. I'm dedicated enough to try. I'm just not talented enough to actually do it. He says we're working all this equipment and trying to keep me in line. Trying being the opposite word. Eh, I didn't know. First part there. <laughs> <laughs> so, first game, like, I'm going to go in order of the games that we liked. The games we liked we'll mention, uh, but we're going to go in order that they came up during the direct presentation. Yeah. Um, any important things that aren't just essentially the name of the game, the genre, how good it looked and release date will get mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. um, like new modes or you know additions to games if it's a port or a remaster mm -hmm. yeah. or like kind of what we think you should expect if it is you know a real new game kind of thing. A big wow moment. Yeah. So the first game uh, is Mario and Luigi. Bowser's Inside Story and Bowser Jr. Journey for the 3DS. The first bunch of games are 3DS. They they done the first half of the direct presentation 3DS stuff, mm -hmm. and the second half was Switch. Yeah. Um, so Bowser's Inside Story is a remake from the N64, if I remember correctly. But Bowser's uh, Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Is, new edition. is a new addition to the game yeah. and that is a behind the scenes thing of what happens with Bowser Jr. as it's going on. It's a kind of platforming ARPG kind of style game. Yeah, it's kind of cool, it's odd, but yeah, it's kind of cool. It, it does look so much fun. 
It looks like great fun to play. Mm, I give you that. And that is coming sometime 2019. They've not set a definite release date, but uh, from what we saw, it looks like it's quite a way into development. Mm -hmm. uh, so do expect news about that. Um, probably, I would I would imagine summer Nintendo Directs yeah, or maybe. E3. That's when I would expect to see them uh, make more of an announcement about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is that that that's just that's just a prediction though, um, not set in stone. Um, the next one is everybody's favourite upcoming 3DS game, Detective Pikachu. That actually looks amazing. Not gonna lie, it looks like so much fun. I I could like you, you only really saw cutscenes uh, during the Nintendo Direct presentation. Uh, I've not actually seen any gameplay from any other coverage of it. Yeah, but it's enough for me to actually want to get, I'm not going to lie. I imagine it's a puzzle game. Yeah. Um, that is coming March 23rd. And uh, on the same day, it's also releasing the giant amiibo. Mm -hmm. Now, the standard amiibo is about 7.2 centimetres. Something like that, yeah. Not that big. The normal scale goes 2.5 inches. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, inches is metric. I, I, I don't know what league it I'm, makes it easier. I'm I, guessing. When I watched it the first time around, I watched the Nintendo UK version, which gave it seven years. Uh, right? So we sh you came. You should be the wrong one then. It's your fault. It's the same. It's the same thing, except for many regional stuff has changed. Well so, then, like, like <laughs> the, the arms tournament. Yeah. Which was in LA. Yeah. It's in Switzerland on the UK one. Well, someone's going to the wrong place. Because the European one's in Switzerland. Um, uh, the, and the Detective Pikachu one is about 14.2 centimetres. So it's, it's nearly double the size. Or five inches. Um, <coughs> anyway, it's nearly double the size of a standard amiibo. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it, it does. It, it looks so funny. And as quick aside, uh, I don't know if this is definitely silly set in stone. Apparently there's going to be a movie version of it, with none alert than Deadpool himself, Ryan Reynolds, being Detective Pikachu, which sounds amazing. I still think Danny DeVito would be a better Detective Pikachu with a voice. You're saying that for hate, aren't you? No, no, they're just the you, voice. You so are. Just you so are. You're wanting Danny DeVito to Pikachu out for running around <laughs> with a monocle and at the top of that going, yes, yes, yes. I want to hear Danny DeVito say quick attack. He doesn't, does he battle? Uh, I don't think it, I don't Wait, think why, Detective Pikachu battles. But why would he shoot his uh, <coughs> uh, moves in? Pokemon don't do that. But in the unless do. But in the Nintendo Direct presentation, one of the cutscenes was Pikachu. Detective Pikachu tried to do quick attack. He goes right, okay, let's go quick attack. Runs like three steps, huffs and puffs. I and goes last to that, do it, Tim. See, I missed that, but oh, that makes more sense. Okay, now I can imagine Danny doing that now. Okay. okay <laughs> I also can imagine Ryan Reynolds voice in the though. Oh, I'm torn. Uh, it was originally speculated that it was going to be Danny DeVito voicing Detective Pikachu in the game. That would be pretty cool. I don't know who he got, he's got some <clears throat> random gruff voice. Yeah. I'm guessing he's probably British. Probably from South London. You know him, don't you? No. That's really creepy if you're right, Lynn. Uh, it, it just seems like that kind of character would have that kind of voice. The kind of gruff detective would have a South of London accent. Okay, I know he looks like Sherlock, but come on now. What's your game you know, of century so? Um anyway. The next game is a classic. Uh -huh. And it is a remake of the GameCube hit Luigi's Mansion. Lee. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion is coming to 3DS um Luigi's Mansion I played on the the GameCube and it was so fun. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I am a PlayStation fanatic, sort of. So wait, wait, wait. Last time I went to your house to play video games, you didn't own a PlayStation. You had an Xbox 360, and we played Left 4 Dead. Ah, uh, I've always owned a PlayStation of some sort. It was downstairs. Oh. And my room was Xbox. <laughs> But by all means, <laughs> talk shit more. <laughs> I didn't realise you had a PlayStation in the living room, okay? Reached. I've had a PlayStation product since I was like... 
eight. Anyway, back to the point. I think I had a point. You, I hate you overrode my point. Play PlayStation One, man. No, I'm trying to think. When did the PlayStation One come out? I think I, I had one launch year, but I can't remember what year it was, so I can't tell you how old it was at the time. <laughs> okay, you're over my point to the point I can't remember what my point was. You probably lose your match. That one. Yeah, so, um, admittedly, I've not played as many Nintendo esque games. Obviously, when it comes to, like, say, like, uh, the Game Boy and stuff well, from those kind of consoles, and yeah, I've played a couple. So, bet the best you could do right now is to say, it looked good in the trailer. I'll give you that, it looked good. Yes, um, well, there's a new mode added for the game. It's called Boss Rush, where you can, you know, fight bosses again in a kind of challenge mode. Uh, I think that includes bosses from the sequel, um, uh, Har uh, New Moon, Luigi's Mansion New Moon, which came out on the, the original DS, I think. I did specify that, so I'm not 100% sure of that. It, it did say boss rush mode is added. I'm guessing... It's yeah, we're guessing, funny. yeah. I'm guessing here. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't confirm or deny it. Mm -hmm. um, but that is coming out at some point this year. It just said sometime 2018. Yeah. It did not give you a... Helpful as hell, you know. It, it didn't give you an actual date. I think this next one is the closest release, this next one, uh, with the release date being March 16th, and that is Kirby Star Allies. Now that looks random as a well. So... Um, you will have legacy characters as teammates or dream allies. Uh, the ones packed in the game are King DDD, Meta Knight, and B Bandana Waddle D. Such names, eh? Please say King, what's his face again? King DDD. I'm trying to say that five times fast. King DDD, King DDD, King DDD, King DDD. King <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the simple things. Uh, and there are more more characters to come in free updates. Confirmed characters are Rick Kainiku, which is one character who can shapeshift. Alright. Gooey and Giselle. Marks. Hi, I'm in the game. Um so yeah, March sixteenth, uh, you know, it's gonna be a platforming game like all other Kirby games have been. Mm -hmm. uh, first update will be March 28th. That's when you'll get Rick Kainuku, Marks and Gooey. Mm -hmm. And it looks like such a blast to play. Um, next on the list is yet another uh, remaster. And that is Okami. Okay, again, uh, obviously this is, you can play this on PlayStation and such, but... Well, Okami HD recently came out on uh, PS4. Yeah, I've never I've not had the opportunity to play it yet, but it does look visually stunning. Always has. Oh yes. God. Um, I think Okami originally came out on the Wii. Damn. Um, but uh, the paintbrush mechanic uh, from Okami, if you have your Switch in TV or tabletop mode, you can use the Joy-Con's motion control to interact with using the paintbrush, mm -hmm. or if you use it in a tablet mode or handheld mode, uh, you use the touch screen to use the paintbrush. And um, that is a kind of puzzle platforming, fighting, beat 'em up, craziness RPG. It, it, it's 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 a great looking game. I've not played it, but I've seen gameplay of it. It looks fantastic. It plays well. Uh, it is coming to Switch on the uh, on the. It's not even got a the development release date. It's summer, summer twenty eighteen. The uh, the next one is like every time I do a podcast and we talk about games for the Switch, I always say this game makes me want to buy a Switch. This game really makes me want to buy a Switch. God damn, buy a Switch. And it is called Octopath Traveler. Now, it is, an, is a new JRPG from Square Enix. 
And they've already released two characters. Uh, I don't know what their names are. I only took notes for the Nintendo Direct presentation today. You're a horrible note taker. So it's not like I've had enough time to, to go back and research. Uh, but they were, their, their job class was a dancer and a warrior. Two new characters and their classes have been announced. And that is Tressa the Merchant and Alfin the Apothecary, mm -hmm. or a healer basically. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Apothecary. Um, so you can combine jobs uh, and they will grant uh, it more strategic options within battle. Yeah, you have to combine the battle mode and the yeah. job mode. So um, your first job. Mm -hmm is the one where you can use kind of actions for it outside of battle. Yeah. Like Tressa can use purchase mm -hmm. and buy things off people who don't normally sell things. And Alfin can use inquire and find out information that other characters wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But you can combine them, you can give them a second one but still only use in battle. Yeah. To grant strategic options. But I personally like I'm I don't know if this is being biased from playing as Paladin on FF14 just now, yeah, or is. if this is because I would normally do this in other games as well if I'd given the option. I would combine, com combine, combine. New word. Wa warrior and apothecary. So I could deal massive damage and heal. Hmm. Um, the graphics for it looks so good, but it just. It, it looks like one of those pop-up books. It is really beautiful. Um, the idea, like, obviously the surroundings and the characters are kind of like lower, not even the lower res, just like less detailed. But then when you hit damage, yeah. just the colours, and you're like, whoa, where did I come from? Like everything except from the effects look like it's kind of meant to be the kind of earlier eight bit, sixteen bit sprite esque look. Yeah, like you know, Final Fantasy IX kind yeah. of idea. But like. When you see the the effects coming from slashes or the magic going off, it is like boom HD everywhere. Yeah, um, it's a really nice combination of both types of graphics. Mm -hmm. um, that that game is coming the thirteenth of July, and it has a really lovely looking uh, collector's edition. It comes with a map which looks really nice. Mm -hmm. A coin. No, a cool. coin which is based off the in-game currency. Uh, it's got the a pop up book with all the characters in it. And that looks, a that looks worth it itself, good god. And sounds of Octopath. It, it, it just looks so, so good. It, it definitely, if you are getting the game, I definitely pr would be worth uh, investing in the collector's edition. Did it give a pricing though? I can't remember that. No, it didn't give a pricing. That's um, when you need to watch it then. But uh, most games for the Switch. On first release are about fifty pounds. Oh, okay. And collector's editions will go upwards seventy minimum upwards usually. Um, uh, but it's the same with most games uh, true, anyway. Yeah, true, so, yeah. um, it's going to it's it's going to be worth it though because it's a Square Enix product. Uh, oh well, there's a bias. <laughs> that's the bias. It's the bias coming in. Obviously, it's a Square Enix product. Jack's gonna love it. That's usually the usually way it works, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Um, next game is I've not played this particular game. I've played a similar game from the same developer, mm -hmm. and I suck so bad at it, but love playing it. Uh, the game in question, the one that I play is Bloodborne. The game in Nintendo Direct was Dark Souls. Uh, the popular hardcore ARPG comes to the Switch. For a new generation of people hating dying. <laughs> oh man, I, it, it's it's such a game, but uh, I've seen people play it, man. It, it looks such a great challenge. I no. probably wouldn't get past the first boss. In fact, I probably wouldn't even make it to the first boss. I hate these kind of games. I've tried. Let's see, I've tried. Ah, uh, uh, my mind's gone blank. Uh, Words of Fallen was a kind of different fall. version of it. God damn! How can you get enjoyment out of a game that pisses you off? I know it, it's, uh, it's an odd one though. Like I get so so pissed off with like cause I also played Neo, 
as oh, well. Jesus. Uh, which is a similar type of game by um, Tech McCoy. And it, I, I really struggle with the game. Mm. I think, see when you overcome that challenge, the, the thing that's been beating you and pissing you off, see when you finally beat it, it just gives you such a feeling of achievement. Until the next one. Until the next one. See, my logic is, you spend, say, a couple of hours trying to take this down this one fucking annoying boss, and you beat him fine, and you get a little ecstasy. However, me playing a different game, I've probably leveled up like 10 times and I've got halfway through the game. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, you play your game, I'll complete mine, and you'll sub you in the first half. Well, one of the things with the kind of Souls. Soulsborne series games and uh, you can do it in Neo as well and mm. probably Lords of the Fallen and I think another game called The Surge is similar. Mm. Uh, you can call in friends to help you and people, when you call in friends, some people can hijack that and come in and destroy you. Well, before launch there will be a network test to test all that stuff out. Mm. Uh, it's not been, we've not been told when the network test is going to be. Yeah. So keep an eye out on uh, Nintendo social media for details on that, if that's something you're interested in. Um, you also get an amiibo for it as well. Oh, the Solaire of Astoria. And by using the amiibo in Dark Souls, it will allow you... I, b I believe the words that you use in, in the Nintendo Direct presentation is to praise the sun with reckless abandon. Sounds so very like 5th century kind of shit, oh god. Um, Victorian, god damn. But yes, uh, that is, the full game itself though is coming May 25th. And if anyone does decide to buy that, I wish you luck. I wish you much luck. I don't. You've just wasted your money and something that's going to piss you off like hell. Uh, so, um, the next game. Uh, was the the main feature of this month's Nintendo Direct, and I must say, it comes out the day before my birthday. So if I have a Switch by then, I'm gonna get this for my birthday. Uh, and it is Mario Tennis Aces. Ah, oh, jeez. Um, so the, the gameplay has been refined uh, for the Switch, so you can play it with a controller or the Joy Cons up to you. Uh, there's a new racket break system and it looks it just looks like a blast to play to be fair. Okay, no, I'll stop you there. It looks boring as hell. I think any any game any sports game where you can use the Joy Cons or the Wii Motes if you're playing it back on the Wii, where you can actually get up and actually use use it to actually simulate the actions you would be doing in the game, I think that looks like a blast to play. That's why I still love playing Wii Sports on the Wii. See, for me it's just an idea of porting Mario into like sports games that just bores me. Sonic and Mario at the Olympics was fun. I'll give you it looked cool, but at the same time... Oh, it was like you're beating a dead rat. They just put Mario in everything nowadays. Beating a dead rat. Like, eventually... Is, it, is, the, t is, is the actual phrase not beating a dead horse? Fine, you, you want to go and kill a horse, you go and kill a horse. <laughs> Bastard. Point is, eventually Myers will get enough money. We're gonna do another movie series to hunt us more. Uh, the, just like Mario, Sonic, the two of them, they're done franchises. The original fans are mortified by some of the stuff that's come out from them. Talking about the new, you said a new movie series. Do you remember the original uh, live action? Not not live action. Uh, oh, it was live action. Uh, cartoon, the original cartoon that had the live action Mario and Luigi doing Do the Mario at the end. Yeah. Do you remember who was Mario in that bit? No. <laughs> Lou Ferrigno. Oh, good lord. <laughs> no, but there was actually a live action Mario film which still hunts me to this day. Yeah. Was, it, was it Lou Ferrigno that was Mario? No, but it was actually proper cast, like damn star studded cast. It haunts me. I'm going to have to look that up now. Oh, you must, and watch it, and then cry. I'll have nightmares. Well, you might have nightmares. You just, you just cry. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this, uh, this game comes out 22nd June. Mm. Uh, there is a pre-launch tourney. Uh, 1v1 
all the way up to the winner. Keep an eye again, no official date for that yet, but keep an eye out on uh, Nintendo social media for more info on that. Next one's just a, a quick short one. Uh, just a real all they gave you was a release date. Mm -hmm. And that is Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Uh, and it's just a straight up port of the Wii U game. And that is May 18th. That's coming. And we're down to the last two two items from Nintendo Direct. And like up up until this point, Nintendo Direct has been good. And see after this like this point on, it just seemed to get better. Like <laughs> Jesus. Because we're talking Splatoon 2. In a series I never thought I like, but still looks pretty cool. It's so much fun to play. Um, I, uh, Paz has it on the Switch and we played it and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Uh, well in April it gets upgraded upgraded upgraded. I can't speak today, Mark. It's at least 30 hour weeks at work, I tell you. I'm only contracted 16. I do 30 and then my mind goes to mush. Maybe it's because you've got a horrible girlfriend working there. I don't have a girlfriend working there. Ex-girlfriend. Ex well, uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, version 3.0 comes out April. You get over 100 pieces of new gear, 3 new stages, and rank X. Which is better than S+. And just sounds like a weird drug. Right, X. Um, but yeah, that's coming in April, mm -hmm. and that's a free update. But uh, summer this year, you're getting the Octo expansion, which is a single-player campaign. Oh, those look pretty cool. I'll give them that. Where you will battle your way through a massive underground facility. Uh, I'll mention a wee bit of the story because that, that was pretty much all it was yeah. for the Nintendo Direct bit. Basically, um, you're a, a Inkling? No, no, lower one's Inkling, she's an... Inkling Lake. No, lower ones are actual Inklings, she's an actual squid thing. Right. Squidling. Squidling. <laughs> Squidling. <laughs> That's awesome. Squidling! Uh, this sounds so funny. Um, next Pokemon but, generation. Yeah, Squidlings will be in the next Pokemon. Oh yeah. Um, do you use Ink Blast? No, nah, that's strip copyright. No, no get pulled. Um, so yeah, you battle your way through a sizable underground facility as a Squidling. Just point out, we say underground facility literally means like a subway. Just yeah. for clarification, unless you think some underground base, it's a subway. You jump in subway cars. Three different subway lines connect together. Mm -hmm. Um. But it still looks pretty sizable. Um, your squidling appears to have lost their memory and is fighting to get it back. Fight and it will also uh, bring bring some of the lore to the the front of the game as well, like uh, character backgrounds and stuff for some of your characters, like Captain Cuttlefish and so forth. Um, it will expand on the lore of the game. Uh, it looks like a blast to play. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to fill out a lot of the, uh, a lot of the lore, which for kind of story game kind of Lovers. people That's like very, myself and Mark, important. that is a is a great big thing for us. Has it ever been like, explained what the hell happened from like the history and stuff? Uh, I don't know. I've not played enough Splatoon to know because I don't have a Switch. But the Running Fury is like apparently squids evolved and humans died, so we're like. The next. A hybrid. Yeah, some, that that does not bode well for sea life. <laughs> I mean, for fishermen and long journeys, oh, well, come on now. I know. But um, summer 2018 for that. Yeah. If I have a switch, I will be getting it. Oh my god, get a switch! And finally, there was one last bit which had everyone. I don't know why I've got my arms up like this. You're just praising the sun now. I'm praising the sun. With reckless abandon. We got the Smash trailer. Now every every new game, there's new characters. This year, Squidlings confirmed. Inklings confirmed. Good lord, get them right, they're different things. Splatoon confirmed. Um, no, we didn't see any gameplay of them, so no. we're not exactly too sure what they're doing it. We saw two Inklings having a battle, the lights went out. We turned around, saw the Smash logo, 
and Mario looked angry as fuck. Um, he did. And Link looked slightly upset. He was in the wrong outfit. Yeah, he, uh, Link's in the Breath of the Wild outfit this this time around. He Ain't looks happy. angry that he's not in his Ocarina of Time outfit. And Mario's moustache just looks raging. Although I still think we'll still have to Link. Mm, where's not you? Uh, I just like every year they do like the first time they had Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It was Pokemon Trainer. And then they had a couple of Pokemon and they added a couple new ones, took some out, changed some. I wonder what Pokemon we're going to get this year as well. Hmm. Probably one of the weird new generation I hate. Yeah. Likely. Yeah. Um, I just remembered something I wanted to mention. Here we go. This is all speculation. Alright. Uh, I've, I've not played the first two games. Oh, this isn't bad well. But I've seen gameplay and they look fantastic games. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Because it works, you pad this anymore. I, I can try. I've <laughs> tried build suspense. Doesn't work. <laughs> works a little bit. Um, well, it only doesn't work when you interrupt me. It's a talk thing. That's what I'm meant to do. <laughs> Half Life 3. Oh my god, I'm not. Oh, I'm very ambivalent about this. And there's been talk of a third part coming out for. Literally donkey's ears, clown. Well, apparently, not sure how true this is. I've heard this from someone else. There's been a picture recently of Gabe Newell with a Half Life 3 walkthrough in his hand holding up one finger. Now, that could be one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade, one century, one millennium, one universe, but not this one. We don't know what it means. It could all just be another hoax. We don't know. But for anyone who out there who is really looking forward to Half Life Three, hopefully that is this picture is good news. Please tell me you've got like a link to this somewhere for people to see that. No, I was someone I was talking to. They they said if I was looking for something to talk about uh, for this podcast, I could mention that. I was like, no, because I'm covering Nintendo Direct and I'm doing a big thing on loot boxes. But by all means, you had it anyway. But by hell, I did it anyway. Yeah. So thank you, random person. It was Josh. He's not, oh. he's not particularly random. He's 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 not a gaming kid. He streams with us. What's up, man? Um, but yes, Josh told me all about this. Uh, I don't know how sure it is because I've not actually seen the picture myself. Although if he brings it up for, and um, with relation to, to the podcast, it's probably going to be something that's actually going to be out there. So. So yes, now we give you hearsay as well. Enjoy your information from first hand. <laughs> well, to be fair, it, it's not meant to be all intellectual and factual. Some of it is <laughs> intellectual. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Yeah, we're not we're not particularly intellectual here at Gaming Ken. We just like games. Yeah. And comic books. Yeah. And movies. Yeah. And TV. Yeah. Porn. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting you to go, wait, what? Um, You've not been paying attention. <laughs> okay, we so like energy drinks and video games. That That's our two things, okay? I was going to say energy drinks and porn, but okay. Swallowing occurs in both. <laughs> I'm yes. sorry if there's anyone of a, a religious disposition listening to this. Blame Jack. I'm of a, of a religious disposition. Jack doesn't count. Anyway, <laughs> I think that is it for Gaming Kit, unless you have anything to <clears throat> add. I, I've seen you losing my voice there. Uh, we could pad out with a movie talk and discussion, but I'm not too sure what our time's at. Well, we've, we've been here for about an hour and 19 minutes. Uh, the time is currently 20, <laughs> 25 to 11. We have time if you want. Yeah, our kind of discussions have gone for like an hour, hour or low, so it's really up to you. We could save it for the next one if you want. It is your call. We could even do a special one next week of just movies. I think we should save it for a special just movies. Right. We'll get like a list of random movies we were looking forward to and just have a banner about them. Let's do that. I will do that. I'm, I'm going to just spoil that conversation early. All of mine are the next 20 years of MCU. Pretty much what I'm going to talk about as well. <laughs> Add in DC and any random funds, I'm like, 
Is this happening? Do we want it to happen? I don't think we do. Or do we? Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about what we want to see for the MCU over the next couple of years in depth then. And uh, DC, you know, because of the better ones, just not in movies. <laughs> anyway, that, that is it for tonight, uh, just now for Gaming Ken. We will probably be next week for Movie Talk then. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Next week for Movie Talk, and then we'll be back the week after with our nor- with normal service resumed. Um, we'll be back to talking about games um, next month. Uh, next month, the next uh, time we'll have a topic to talk about beforehand. Okay. And we're going to talk about our favourite moments in all of Final Fantasy. My God. It's great, Nick. If you're listening, give this man a job. He's your ultimate spokesperson. What? How am I the ultimate spokesperson? Dude, you live and breathe Final Fantasy. Your arm says so too. Actually, I'm getting another Final Fantasy tattoo. Oh, here we go. Um, have you told your viewing public what you've got already? Uh, I have um, uh, the Chocomog Summon, the Death Blow Chocomog Summon, uh, running around my wrist. And just above that, I have a Stage 7 Le C brand. Um, I'm working on getting a full on sleeve of Final Fantasy done. Um, now, uh, so the MMOs and some of the other Final Fantasy games had the class slash job system. Now, for all the games where that has been in place, my favourite class has been the Red Mage. Mm-hmm. So I was actually going to get a Red Mage, the, the 8-bit sprite, tattooed on the side of my neck. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the image, the image, the icon for Red Mage, the Red Mage symbol, yeah. on, the, on my arm from the the symbol from 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's my next tattoo. I'm going to get that in about a month, month or two time. Uh, once I've saved up enough to get my new soundboard and mic so we can have a separate mic instead of sharing a mic. Now clearly he's never going to get a switch with us, right? Never. No. Um, I just got to hope I can mine more bitcoins. Oh good lord, don't get us started. Um, no, but once I've got my my second mic and my board, so we can do this by mic each instead of uh, sharing a mic, it means we'll have a better quality sound for the podcast, and it means we will actually both be equally as loud <laughs> instead of as one of us being louder than the other. I'm going to get my tattoo, then save up for a one week intensive driving course. No, oh, jeez, here we go, Jack in the roads. Only because um, my driving, my provisional, expires in October. Ah. So I figured I might as well just clear the thing in the one in, in, in a oneer. Just do the whole twenty hours on the road one week, plus my two tests. Why not? And then, and then that would be it. I don't need to worry about it until I'm like sixty one. <laughs> Praise the sun. Oh my god! Oh, no, it's gonna be a thing now, isn't it? Oh, praise the sun. Yeah. <laughs> it might just be. It's there that I can, I can go all Final Fantasy 12, uh, 12, 14. I can say praise the 12. Oh, good God, no. No, 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 no. Oh. <sighs> anyway, yes. Uh, we, we, we keep talking after we sign off, and that's the problem. Yes, uh, yeah, it's my fault. I didn't say it's your fault. You said we. I said we. Exactly, it's your fault. Not always. Sometimes ah, it's yours. Yeah, right. Anyway, this is good night from me. Yeah, we're with you, booze. Are we? Well, that's what you said. We were warmly told we were trying to do it. Get away earlier. No, we're not. It's too late. There's no shops open. No, there's many other reference, because now nah, Anyway. Anyway, just remember there's always room for you at Gaming Kin. If you want to be my friend, this is good night from Jack and good night from Mark. Bye. And we'll catch you next week. <laughs>